One of the most powerful aspects of Autoplay Media Studio 5.0 is the ability to integrate with Flash content. This allows you to leverage just, you know, super rich content and uh, presentability for your projects. But one of the things that's arisen, and not just with Autoplay Media Studio, but in general over the years, is a general misunderstanding of FS commands and how they work and how you can use them. For years, FS commands have been an integral part of Flash and it allows you to communicate with things such as JavaScript and so forth. In the particular case of Autoplay Media Studio, FS commands are the method that Autoplay Media Studio uses to communicate with Flash. Using this method, you can create really high level integ um, integration between Flash objects and your Autoplay Media Studio applications and any type of two-way communication that you want to set up. So let's go ahead and demystify FS commands. They're really easy to use and you'll be surprised when we finish this chapter how easy they are. Okay, so let's take a look at what FS commands are. FS command is basically an envelope. and We're just looking at this, this red text here on the left to start with. It has a name and it contains a single piece of data. Now this is just a general rule that we're going to work with for now to make this easy to understand. So as you can see we've got an illustration here of an envelope and it's got a name on the outside and inside is a piece of data called an argument. So it's very simple. For example, um, an FS command name could be my data and the argument could contain my name, for example. Okay, so it's a very simple model. It's just a two-part um, data envelope, essentially. Okay, so let's take a look at the blue text here. An FS command is just a container. So to demystify that, it's, it's not um, any type of uh, fancy action or a function or something like that. It is a function, but it's a very simple function, and all it does is deliver this data, and that is uh, this two-part data, to your Autoplay Media Studio application in this case. Each FS command has two parts, a name and an argument. That's all you need to worry about. The argument is optional, but we'll look at that in a sec. Okay, you can name an FS command anything you like. Now, basically, this is a general rule I'm making again. Again, you want to adhere to the same naming uh, rules that you would use when you're naming files and stuff. You wouldn't start with a space and a number and so forth. So you want to stick to good naming conventions, but suffice to say that you can customize the name of an FS command. It isn't like some preset actions where you have to memorize some syntax. You can basically just name it something that means something to you. So this makes it really easy to work with them because you can just basically make up your own FS command names. The argument portion of an FS command is optional and it contains simple data. So for example, if the FS command, we're looking at the envelope here again, uh, name on the outside, the label of the envelope said my name, the argument inside might say Johnny. Okay, so it's a very simple sort of a data pair. Okay, um, You can actually, you know, contain some pretty complex data in there, but suffice to say that for best practice, just for the simplicity of communicating two ways bef between the apps and not having a lot of um, complicated stuff to worry about, it's best to keep your FS command names and arguments to, to short single words or something that means something to you. They're basically just triggers that you're going to use to trigger actions anyhow. So passing really elaborate data is often not necessarily functional. However, you can, if you, if you need to, pass data um, from Flash functions to Autoplay Media Studio applications and so forth. So you can basically extend this, this idea as far as you need to. Okay. Let's go ahead now, and I'm going to go into Macromedia Flash. I've created a new file here, and it's just a small file. I'm going to go ahead and create a simple rectangle on my sh on my stage here. We're going to use that as a button, and I'm just going to convert that to a button. So I'm pressing F8, shortcut key, and then checking button here and pressing OK, and I'm going to center that on my stage with my align palette. So it's a very simple little project. That's the whole project. It's complete and we're ready to go. It's a simple one frame flash movie. Now, an FS command in flash can be triggered from any type of an event. In this particular case, we're going to use a button. But you could also do it from a frame or from some type of an animation, user input, so forth. In this particular case, let's look at one very simple example and then we'll get started there and work up to some more complicated stuff. So we've got our button here. I'm going to select it. Then I'm going to open up my actions palette here. And I'm going to go ahead and type in manually here fs command then I'm going to put in some brackets and a semicolon and inside the brackets we're just going to pass a single um, 
piece of data, and that'll be the FS command name. We're not going to worry about the argument portion for now. I'm just going to go ahead and type in exit. Okay, now we need to sandwich this in some type of an event handler. In this particular case, we'll put it in on release event handler because we're working with a button. So when you click the button and then let go of your mouse, it'll trigger this FS command. And the FS command that it will trigger is called exit. Okay, we made that up and we just went ahead and typed it in. Now you can see how simple it is to add one. Let's go ahead and publish our movie. So file, export movie. I'm just going to publish it into the flash folder of my autoplay media studio project here and that's just a blank project I've set up here where I've put the flash object onto the stage okay so it's a very simple thing I just dragged it onto the stage I just did this beforehand now I'm gonna double click on this flash movie and you'll notice that in the actions area there's an event handler here called on FS command so whenever that flash movie fires an FS command it's gonna detect that now what we can do here is we can use these built-in variables EFS command and EFS args to detect what content was within that FS command that was fired. So let's go ahead and use the EFS command built-in variable and we'll test our FS command to see if it was the correct one. We'll say <coughs> if EFS command equals exit then and we'll sandwich some type of an action inside here. How about a dialog message box? The good old standard. And inside there, we'll just go ahead and trigger some text that says button pushed. Okay. So if our FS command that is fired by that button equals exit, which we know it does, then it's going to trigger this dialog message box. But well, let's put another tricky little statement in here to make sure it's not just randomly firing this dialog message box, but to make sure that it is actually detecting our FS command. Let's go ahead and cut and paste our code here, make a second copy, and this time we'll change the FS command part here to say go. Okay, so basically we're telling our application if the FS command that got fired equals exit, then give me a dialog message box that says button pushed, but if it's if the FS command was go, then give me a dialog message box that says go. So we can tell right now whether it's indeed detecting that FS command or not. So let's go ahead and press OK and preview our presentation. We'll press F5. And we've got our Swift movie here with our button that we created. If I go ahead and click on that, it's going to trigger that FS command. As you can see, it says here, button pushed. And that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Let's press OK and see if another dialog pops up that says go. And indeed it doesn't. So we can tell for sure that it was actually detecting our FS command. Now if we went back to Flash, I'm going to close this application, and we changed our FS command here in our code to say go, and then republished our movie, so file, export movie, into our Flash folder. Now this time, when we run our autoplay Media Studio application without changing anything, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to get a dialog message box that says go, right? Because now it's firing an FS command called go, and it's detecting that instead of the exit. So let's go ahead and press OK. You can see it worked. We'll close that down. We'll take a final look at this and review what we've seen here. OK, so we've detected this EFS command built-in variable, which is the name of the FS command fired, and we've acted upon it. So to review the model of what's going on here, in our FS command, which is this envelope here, we've set the name. The argument is optional, remember, so we've gone ahead and just sent an env empty envelope, if you like. There's no argument inside. And we named our envelope on the outside here, exit. Okay, And then when we did that, we did that by just typing in this FS command here, exit, and attaching it, in this case, to an event on a button. But that could have been any type of flash event. And then, in the Autoplay Media Studio application, when we ran our application, when that FS command was fired due to that event, in this case a button being clicked from the Flash movie, we detected that automatically in our Autoplay Media Studio on FS command area, and we tested the value of that FS command to see whether it equaled indeed exit, which is what we typed in, and then we acted upon that. And you can trigger any amount of actions in between here as you like. In this case, we just did a simple dialog message box. 
and then we went back and did the same thing with the fs command go. So this should be hopefully a pretty simple explanation of what fs commands are and how they work to everybody out there and we can go ahead and work um, on the next uh, lesson in which we will actually go ahead and create some slightly more complicated fs commands, some two-part fs commands and pass some data. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now.